This video will co cover the topic of isomerism, but before we get to the topic of isomers, we need to talk about bond rotation, because isomerism results from the fact that some bonds can't rotate. So we'll start with single bonds. Single bonds rotate freely. The reason that single bonds can rotate freely is that the sigma bond is cylindrically symmetrical which means that rotating around the axis of the single sigma bond does not affect it. An example of this is ethane. We can rotate about the single bond, the sigma bond, between the two carbons of ethane. This bond can rotate freely, and it doesn't change the molecule. This is not the case in double bonds. Double bonds cannot rotate. They are not cylindrically symmetrical. So if, as an example, we look at ethene, the pi bond of ethene is not cylindrically symmetrical, so we cannot rotate about this axis. Let's look at the bonding picture to understand why. The sigma bond framework for ethene looks like this, where carbon is using sp2 hybridized orbitals and hydrogen is using s orbitals. The pi bonding framework for ethene looks like this, where we have overlap between p orbitals on both carbons above and below the sigma bonding framework. This is what makes up the pi bond. Rotation about the axis through the two carbon atoms would break this overlap and therefore break the pi bond. Therefore, double bonds cannot rotate about the axis between the two atoms. The same is true for triple bonds. Triple bonds have uh, two pi bonds, one above and below the axis, one in front of and behind the axis, and rotation would cause breaking of these pi bonds. So single bonds can rotate, double bonds and triple bonds cannot. We care about bond rotation because it leads to isomerism. Consider the following two molecules. Both of these molecules have the same molecular formula, C4H8. But because there cannot be rotation around the carbon-carbon double bond, these are different compounds. They are called isomers. Isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula, but are different compounds. Because they're ha they are different compounds, they have different physical properties. The compound on the left that has the two CH3 groups on different sides of the double bond is called the trans isomer. The molecule on the right that has the two CH3 groups on the same side of the double bond is called the cis isomer. When I'm talking about being on the same side or different sides of the double bond, we're talking about being on different sides of the double bond, either on the same side of that double bond or on different sides of that double bond based on an axis that runs through that double bond. And these two isomers have different physical properties, such as boiling point. They actually differ by several degrees just based on the location of those CH3 groups relative to one another. There are several types of isomers, but for now we're going to focus two classes of stereoisomer. The first is called constitutional isomers. Constitutional isomers, or structural isomers, differ only in how the atoms are connected together. For example, let's look at some constitutional isomers with a molecular formula of C5H12. Remember that isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but are different compounds, so all of these constitutional isomers must have the same molecular formula, C5H12. All three of these isomers have the same molecular formula. If you count up the carbons and hydrogens, they should have 5 and 12 of each, respectively. But they differ in how the atoms are connected together, making them constitutional isomers. The second type of that we will discuss at this point are called stereoisomers. Stereoisomers differ only in how the atoms are oriented in space. There's no difference in how the atoms are connected together. For example, let's look at two stereoisomers that both have the molecular formula C4H8. These two stereoisomers are the cis and trans isomers of the alkene that we considered before. The atoms are connected together in exactly the same order. We have an sp3 carbon, followed by an sp2 carbon, another sp2 carbon, and an sp3 carbon, and that's the same in the trans isomer, sp3, sp2, sp2, sp3. So they only differ in the orientation of the sp3 atoms in space. 
This is one example of stereoisomers. More specifically, these are called cis-trans isomers or geometric isomers. An example of a constitutional isomer with the same molecular formula could look like this. This molecule has the same molecular formula, but differs in the order of attachment of atoms, specifically sp2, sp2, sp3, sp3.